Hey all, I thought I'd make a little guide on how to convert your photos to CMYK for printing. Um, making the guide because quite often there'll be a colour shift. So what I'll do, I'll just show you this chart. Just zoom in a little bit more. Basically, this outer triangle is the uh, RGB colour gamut. As you can see, there's more shades of green, yellow, you've got certain brighter blues and purples um, than the CMYK version, which is the overall, which is this internal circle. Basically, um, the main reason for this is because RGB it tends to be backlit um, because it's the format for like monitors and screens in general, where CMYK, um, sign magenta, yellow and black ink is designed for going onto paper, which obviously doesn't have a backlight. So this is why there are some compromises in the uh, color spectrum. Now you do get some printers with extra inks like light cyan, light magenta, or maybe a green or orange to expand this spectrum a little bit more, but um, that's a topic for another video because generally everything gets converted to CMYK. This is a specialist printer. So I'm gonna walk you through what I do to um, prepare my photos for printing without losing too much color detail. You do sometimes have to change the hue slightly to bring some brightness back. So I'll show you now, starting with exporting from Lightroom then opening in Photoshop and saving it. Right, let's go to Lightroom. So I've got this picture of the Culver Towers Church from uh, last week's Aurora. Uh, it's nice and vibrant of many colors. So I thought this would be a good one to use. So firstly, we'll export this as a TIFF, a full size TIFF at 16 bits of data. Uh, color space sRGB will be fine. So we'll export max resolution. I'll just put this in this folder here. Now let's go to this folder. So print conversion sample. Right, let's name this one sRGB. And then let's duplicate it and call it CMYK. I'm basically gonna open both in Photoshop. One is a reference of the colors before it was converted and one after, and then what I do to bring some vibrance back. So let's open both of these now. Okay, I'm going to arrange these side by side. Arrange, gee, horizontally would probably be better. Okay, so at the top, we have the one that's going to be converted to CMYK. And at the bottom, the one that's RGB. So let's convert this top one. Image, mode, CMYK color. And as you can see, the sky has muddied quite a bit. Um, there's some vibrance lost in the pinks and purples and the greens. So um, this is Photoshop's interpretation of its closest match from RGB to CMYK. But um, it's a shame really it doesn't have AI because it could probably do a better job and save us a job. But anyway, let's, let's go through the process. So we'll, with this CMYK, image selected, if we select a new adjustment layer and go selective color, uh, we first want to select say the greens and um, basically cyan and yellow makes green. So these are the sliders we want to play with. Absolute is the option to check. It just does a more global change to the color. So right, we'll add some yellow here. If you see when I bring this up and down, it brings a lot more of the yellow vibrance back in, in there. It's not going to be identical to the original, but we just want it to pop. So it makes a nice vibrant print. So um, yeah, we'll play with a sign one here. If we bring this sign back, it does make it a little bit more yellow because we're obviously reducing the blue in the color to make it green. But um, let's just go back a little bit. I think somewhere about there will do. 
and then if we go to magentas um pull the magentas up and down just to show you so let's take some cyan just there for a quick rundown um cyan and magenta make blue unless the magenta is higher than the cyan then it makes purple magenta and yellow make red um cyan and yellow make green as mentioned um so yeah it's really just a case of playing with the sliders so i'm going to make this magenta i'm mm, struggling here what to do with that one it's pull this well that crush is there so let's just bring the cyan down and the magenta up a little bit okay then we go to the blues and then we want to keep some of the blue so we'll add the sign and a bit more magenta and that's what makes it a bit more contrasting um and then we've got this um sort of teal in this guy as well so um, let's have a look at the cyan's just bring that all the way down there we go so we could probably take some cyan out of that to lift the brightness and play with the yellow but bear in mind we're not going to match the bottom we just want it to pop but um, that's, I've probably made that pink a little bit purple, a, bit, a little bit too pink actually at the top. So let's bring that magenta slider back down and bring the cyan back up. Um, now, if you add yellow to it, it's going to obviously make that pink more red looking. But let me bring the yellow down because there might be certain shades of other colors as well. So we've massively improved the brightness of the green area and the um, sort of teal above it, although it's a little bit of a different shift in hue. And the blue and purple at the top is a little bit more vibrant. I'm just trying to think how I could improve these um, pink bands of light. Let me go back to the magentas. Bringing the yellow down does help a little bit. I think we're just going to have to drop the sign and go with a more sort of um, off pink rather than fuchsia pink finish on that one. But there's other adjustment layers you can do as well. You could just do the general hue saturation slider and just saturate the whole image once you've tweaked it. And play with the lightness and darkness of the whole image. That obviously makes it a little bit more contrasting. So it's nice and vibrant at the top now, but obviously not identical. So I doubt I'm going to get this perfect in this, in this video, but it gives you a clearer indication of what needs to be done to um, get the most vibrant image possible out of CMYK. So, right, once I would have finished playing around with the sliders, um, actually, let's just try one more thing. There's a curves adjustment layer. If we open the curves and then select the hand, you can click on the pink and drag it up and down. So just to control the pink areas. So that, that would open it out more as well completely different hue but it does open it out to show the um, bands more and you can do the same sort of thing here with the greens as well up and down selecting points but anyway those um techniques selective color curves with the hand selection and the hue saturation should get you close ish and at least bring some vibrance back so that you're happy to go to print. Now, um, in terms of saving it for print, 
If you're an absolute purist, you could save it as a TIFF file, but when the files are big, they end up gigabytes, and then you end up, end up having to use WeTransfer and everything to send it to your print supplier. But if you save as a JPEG, uh, here, click Save, and just make sure that the quality is maximum. So the file size will be a fraction of what a TIFF will be. And when it's printed, there'll be no difference, not unless you're looking at it under a magnifying glass. Um, you obviously want the compression off because that will create artifacts in the image the lower you go. But um, in my print studio, um, quite often I do these one and a half meters by meter canvas prints. And they'll send me 15 images as TIFF files and they'll all be like a gigabyte, gigabyte and a half each. And I end up resaving them all as JPEGs anyway, because it's just hard, easier to manage. Um, if you start throwing multiple gigabyte files at the printer, it just slows everything down, the rendering time. And you could print a JPEG and TIFF file side by side, and you really would not see any difference, not unless you're really zooming in with a magnifying glass, like I mentioned. So yeah, for efficiency, go with maximum quality JPEG and send that to your print provider. Hey, I could be your print provider. But um, yeah, whoever you use, do it that way. So there's a little off the cuff explanation there, but um, hopefully someone will find it useful. And if you've got any questions, uh, just drop a comment in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So happy printing.